Nobody on the beach I feel it in the air The summer's out of reach Empty lake, empty streets The sun goes down alone I'm driving by your house Don't know you're not home Mitch Hands K what appears to be a lame Apple brick mini laptop and hopes this inspires her to write a charming love story about this old pot peer that refuses to rot, depreciate in value, and collapse. What for? Your lead story. My lead story. There it is. The San Dimas Pier. What about it? It's condemned. I thought they were going to tear it down. Well, it doesn't have the same intrigue of the peer of death, but what a way to break someone in. as he hears someone crying for his chiropractor as he proclaims he is the save man. Yeah, he's cut. I don't think it's too bad though. He's How in hell did Pineapple Tom Collins get into this season? See, feel the material, the finest quality, imported directly from Brazil. No, I'm not pulling your Wookiee or suggesting a Mexican stereotype. He really is credited on the screen as Guido. Eduardo! What's the special of the day? Bikinis. Enough. Never mind. Made from a new organic material. I don't want to explain, and if it requires panties and or a bra, it's not happening today. One size fits all. Please. Let's just say when we get season three, remember one thing. To bra or not to bra, that will be the question as we gaze into the life of Ms. Major Guns. You will look even more beautiful, if that is possible. I have enough bikinis, Eduardo, thank you. Doesn't matter if your cup is half full or half empty. The point is, you need to buy a different sized bra. So, you got a permit? Uh, a permit? Of course. I'm a businessman. Naturally, I would have a permit. One second, please. Hobie is wishing someone died today, while Mitch engages Homie in a humorous play on question. What's the story here? I thought you were supposed to clean your room before we left. Followed by a question to the accent power. Where? Why do I have to make my bed when I'm not even gonna sleep in it? Buzz! How the hell are you? Where the hell are you? What are you doing in Santa Barbara? 
Later we find out Mitch's brother Buzz has arrived and with a name like that we can either assume he was either one of the original Apollo 13 or some 1950s stock car racer. Hey! I'm back! So Buzz arrives all aboard his high quality made from flexible, flexible resistant plastic usable indoor and outdoor, picks up five times more women than a Lamborghini, the Volkswagen bus. The Volkswagen. He is sure looking hungover, happy fresh off his perfect buzz. Mitch reacts to this as he is the 15th caller in a free Domino's deep dish pizza. America, are you tired of wimpy paper thin pizzas? Next time, go deep with the Chicago dish pizza new from Pizza Hut. Now witness the ultimate heartwarming power of the brand new series, That Bonding Bro Day on the Beach. Brother? I'm gonna have a brother? Speak of the devil. Brothers don't shake hands. Brothers got a hug. <laughs> Buzzy drops a lip balm that he has a son. Hobie, that's your cousin. Kyle. He's me, man. That's right, your very own kid vampire lady from the Lost Boys. That has got to suck. He's my son. <laughs> hey! Hey. Well, trying his hardest not to throw his career as a supporting Baywatch character into a deep slumber, Buzz awakens and tells a typical brotherly cliched story of how he grew to to love his son that he didn't know because of a one-night fling. She later dies of cancer and he retains sole custody of his son. Oh, that's your son. Funny, he may have your physical and athletic attributes of a Buchanan lifeguard, but hereditary-wise, you are 100% not his bitch-ass father. Honestly, he looks more like a son whose mother was an, an intentionally famed fashion model. No offense or anything, but, uh, sure. That he's my son? Yeah. You gotta see him, sir. Unreal. Unreal! Honestly, he looks more like a son whose mother was an internationally famed fashion model. He definitely has got his mom's side of looks. You, sir, just look like a rotten out ashtray. Meanwhile, Hobie gets a first hand lesson on how he can easily be misled. Oh, hey, I'm gonna pop a chill, want one? A chill? What's a chill? First time I ever heard anyone called a beer chill. A beer? How old are you anyway? But unless you are calling it a cold frosty one, you two might as well be drinking root beer, sarsaparilla, or Yogi Jr. root beer. Make yourself up. Uh, no thanks. Go on, take a hit. It's not like you're gonna be driving or anything. You know, the fake beer that makes you act, walk, talk, and fart like a drunk asshole, now with more added starch. Yet they are instantly sobered in the next shot. Forget them, I think I'm, I am way too sober to deal with this. Sun is shining high again, I'm with my brother, I'm with my friend. Brother. We finally head smack into another show plot that Kay's father works for a law firm whom represents his partners who own Peer of Death and find out that they want to tear it down. Wait a minute, I'm not asking you to kill the story. Good. Because I won't. I just want you to listen to my side of it before you publish. I'm so over being bored by this. You break my heart. It sounds fair, which makes me highly suspicious. <laughs> now, let's head back to the Buchanan household and drown our sorrows on some real Coca-Cola family-style dinner drama. They may be mind blown now on Coke, but trust me, they will be more Coke for later. Finish your milk. I hope it's Coke. Wow, a little soda? Some? Here you go, no. Hobie. But when Buzz offers Hobie some, wow, does that really burst Mitch's bubble? Buzz. What, Dad? I believe high fructose corn syrup is surely the devil's candy. 
No wonder you two old chatty Cathy's are so irritable like a bunch of corn syrup crack friends. I mean, listen to yourself. That's what you sound like. Don't do this. Don't do that. You got a rule for everything. Lighten up, brah. Why don't you shut up? Back at the new crib on the block, they begin debating what a Barney is. What group's you into? Well, I don't have any real favorites. New kids on the block? Man, what a Barney. Is this another turn for puffing the purple dinosaur? <laughs> or are they just making up gibberish? What's a Barney? Is it chewing gum? Pepto-Bismol? What? A geek. Hey, no, I, that's what I said. Okay. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Eddie and Shawnee have to stop Guido from selling lost and found bikinis to women. that creepy contribution, Guido. All sales are final. Oh, it's a very strict policy. Maybe I can uh, give you a partial refund. Do you have a receipt? So tell us, Baywatch, good job of opening our ears up to Buzz's son's graphic first-person description of actually seeing his own mother plowed all across the road by a moving vehicle. She, uh, she was riding a bike. And this car crashed a stop sign. It even slowed down. It just, it was just like, pow. She went straight up in the air. Came down right on the windshield. Well, like they say, childhood trauma sure makes the best practical jokes. You saw it? Maybe if he smelled good, his father would love him enough to adopt him into a family that could keep him well-nourished and spotless. The next morning, our topless chef Mitch is preparing his usual shirtless sausage morning special because with this much men in his animal house, it's bound to be a sausage fest, right? That's not until Hobie expresses his innermost desire to surf Pier of Death with Buzz's son. Hey, miss, what's a pump and let's go out. I can't. I got junior lifeguard. Oh, man, bail it. I can't. Your dad makes you do all this stuff? No, I like it. It's fun. Yeah, I like how to be a barn. All I can say is you're going to miss out on some gnarly waves. Where are you going? San Dimas Pier. You can't surf there, it's too dangerous. Wait up, Kyle, I'm coming. The pier has been condemned. Take your boards and leave the area immediately. Do not attempt to surf these waves or you will be arrested. They notice Buzz's son is not around, so they go to Hobie's room to check to see if he is still sleeping. I think it's about time I had a little talk with Kyle. He's just got a lot of problems. I know, Obi. I know. Kyle? Come on, Kyle. Okay, okay, let's keep the usual dumb fuckery to a minimum today. All right, his ass has gone surfing straight with a date to the death pier. to claim another case of severe head concussion. <laughs> Funny, Mitch is the only lifeguarding operating solo, even though we have seen many lifeguards stationed throughout the course of this episode on the beach and out patrolling the ocean. <laughs> What's the nickname of that lifeguard boat? 
the Wardass? Well, Mitch's show is Mitch's save after giving us a huge aquatic hello to the audience. Okay. We got him breathing. Okay. You own the saves. It's funny because after all of that heroism, boys are in a coma. How long was he under? About two to three minutes. His blood gas level went down to 25. That's right on the edge of brain damage. I know. Hey, it's Mitch's saves it. It should be Mitch's say on who lives and dies on this show. After all, the Hoff is paying for most of this second season production anyway. Our helpless hippie Mr. Jim Buchanan finally gets a whiff of reality that his son is going to make a full recovery, but only the basis that he stops being a Barney. Don't lay this on me, man. It's your son we're talking about. What if he lives? Can you handle that? Can you grow up? It's finally when I realized that he was referring to the surfing term Barney, known as a young and experienced surfer who falls off the surfboard too early while surfing. Hey, there is nothing wrong with getting knocked off and getting back on again. That's all a part of this wonderful game of life. But why does that term have to be associated with a show that can't swim by example? <laughs> Ah! Ah! Uh -oh! Goodbye. Ah!